Hi friends, refraction means bending of light. Light bends when it travels from one medium to another. For example, light bends when it travels from air to glass or from air to water. But why does light bend? Because the speed of light changes when it travels from one material to another. In this video, we'll talk about a number called refractive index of a material that measures how much the light slows down in the material or how much it bends. Have you heard of this term refractive index in your everyday lives? If you go to an eyeglass shop, when choosing the lens, you'll hear about this term refractive index. Higher refractive index means the lens can bend the light more efficiently. So your lens will be thinner and more expensive. Let's learn all about refractive index in this video. Let's start with the ray diagram for light traveling from air to glass. Light is traveling in air at a speed of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Now when light hits the glass, its speed slows down. The speed in glass is 2 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So can you see that due to the change in speed, the light bends. Light changes its direction from its original path. Now, if we draw a normal at the point of incidence, can you see that the light bends towards the normal in the glass? Refractive index of a material is defined as the speed of light in vacuum or air divided by the speed of light in the material. The formula can be written as n equal to c by v, where n represents the refractive index of the material. c in physics is used to denote the speed of light in vacuum. Remember Einstein's famous formula E equal to mc square. Even here, c represents the speed of light in vacuum. 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Now the speed of light in air is a bit slower than vacuum, but we take it to be approximately the same. So rc represents the speed of light in vacuum or air. And v represents the speed of light in the material. Now let's apply this formula and calculate the refractive index of glass. In our example, light is traveling from air to glass. So the refractive index of glass is going to be the speed of light in air divided by the speed of light in glass. Let's put in the values in our formula. We get the refractive index of glass as 3 by 2 or 1.5. Now what is the unit of refractive index? That's right, it has no units since it's a ratio of speeds. So the unit meter per second is going to get cancelled out. Next, let's consider the example of water. Let's say we are given the refractive index of water as 1.33 and we want to calculate the speed of light in water. So light is traveling from air to water. Once again, we can use the refractive index formula Refractive index of water is the speed of light in air by the speed of light in water. On substituting the values and solving, we get the speed of light in water as 2.25 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So light is slowing down when it enters water from a speed of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second to 2.25 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Now why is that? Because water is a denser medium compared to air. Let's place this formula of refractive index on our concept board. Refractive index of a material equals speed of light in vacuum or air divided by the speed of light in that material. Let's compare the refraction of light in glass and in water. The refractive index of glass is 1.5. It's more than the refractive index of water, which is 1.33. Now let's compare the speed of light. As you can see, the speed of light in glass is lower than the speed of light in water. So what does this tell us? A higher refractive index number means the speed of light is going to be lower. In fact, the refractive index tells us how much the material slows down the speed of light. So in glass, the speed of light is 1.5 times slower than in air. Similarly, in water, the speed of light is 1.33 times slower than in air. Now, in which case does light bend more? That's right, 
The correct answer is glass because glass has a higher refractive index. In both cases, glass and water, light is coming from air. So the first medium here is air. When the first medium is air, the refractive index is known as the absolute refractive index of the material. So we have the absolute refractive index of glass is 1.5 and the absolute refractive index of water is 1.33. The more accurate definition of absolute refractive index takes the first medium as vacuum. But since the speed of light in air is approximately same as the speed of light in vacuum, we can use either vacuum or air. Now let's talk about the case where light is traveling from water to glass. Since the first medium here is not vacuum or air, we can't call it the absolute refractive index. So here we can talk about the refractive index of glass with respect to water. This is represented by the symbol NGW. So it's the refractive index of glass with respect to water. In some places you may see the symbol mu being used. But for this video, we are going to use the symbol N. So NGW equals the speed of light in water by the speed of light in glass. Now we can generalize this. Let's say light is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2. So this is going to be denoted by the symbol N21. So the refractive index of 2 with respect to 1 is the speed of light in medium 1 by the speed of light in medium 2. Let's place our general formula of refractive index on our concept board. Refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 equals speed of light in medium 1 divided by the speed of light in medium 2. Till now we have talked about refractive index based on speed of light. Now let's talk about refractive index based on angles. The angle of incidence and angle of refraction. Do you remember these two laws of refraction? Here we are going to use the second law of refraction. Sin i by sin r is a constant. Where i is the angle of incidence and r is the angle of refraction. Now this ratio sin i by sin r which is a constant is the refractive index. It's the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. So what does this law tell us? That if you change the angle of incidence by shifting the incident ray, the angle of refraction will change accordingly so that the ratio sin i by sin r remains constant. Let's take the example of glass. Refractive index of glass with respect to air is sin i by sin r. Just like velocity, it's similar to the formula based on speed of light, which was v1 by v2. Here it is the sine of the angle in medium 1 by sine of the angle in medium 2. Let's say the angle of incidence i is 37 degrees and the angle of refraction is 24 degrees. If we take this ratio sine 37 by sine 24, as you can see, we get 1.5. If we use the refractive index formula based on speed of light, or this formula, sin i by sin r, we get the same refractive index for glass, which is 1.5. Now, if you had to experimentally calculate the refractive index of a medium, which formula would you use? That's right, the formula sin i by sin r. Because it's much easier to measure the angles that light makes than to measure the speed of the light in the medium. To measure the angles, you just need a simple protractor. Let's place the formula of refractive index based on angles on our concept board. Refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 equals sin i by sin r. As we learnt, for refraction and refractive index, you need two media, two materials. If the first medium is vacuum or air, it's known as absolute refractive index. Let's say we are given the absolute refractive index of glass and water and we need to calculate the refractive index of glass with respect to water. So light is traveling from water to glass. Let's use the refractive index formula. Refractive index of glass with respect to water is speed of light in water divided by the speed of light in glass. Since we are not given the speeds here, let's see if we can do something 
interesting with this formula. We can break this fraction and add the speed of light in air as the numerator and denominator. Can you see that the left part, Va by Vg, is the refractive index of glass with respect to air? And the right part, Vw by Va, is the refractive index of air with respect to water, which is 1 by the refractive index of water with respect to air. So our magic formula becomes refractive index of glass with respect to water is equal to refractive index of glass with respect to air divided by the refractive index of water with respect to air. We can generalize this formula for any medium. So we can write it as refractive index of medium 3 with respect to medium 2 is equal to the refractive index of medium 3 with respect to medium 1 divided by the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. I think it's easier to remember this formula using the glass, water and air example. Let's use our magic formula to find the refractive index of glass with respect to water. We are given the absolute refractive index of glass and water. Absolute refractive index of glass is 3 by 2. So the refractive index of glass with respect to vacuum or air is 3 by 2. And the absolute refractive index of water is given as 4 by 3. So refractive index of water with respect to air is 4 by 3. Now we can use our magic formula. Refractive index of glass with respect to water is equal to refractive index of glass divided by the refractive index of water. Substituting the values and solving, we get the refractive index of glass with respect to water as 9 by 8. What do you think will be the refractive index of water with respect to glass? You're right. It is 8 by 9. We simply have to take the reciprocal. Since refractive index of water with respect to glass is 1 by the refractive index of glass with respect to water. Let's pin this formula on our concept board. Refractive index of glass with respect to water equals refractive index of glass divided by the refractive index of water. And the general formula is refractive index of medium 3 with respect to medium 2 equals refractive index of medium 3 with respect to medium 1 divided by the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Next time you go to the shop to buy your eyeglasses, I would encourage you to ask for the refractive index of the lens you're planning to buy. Remember, higher the refractive index, the lens will be thinner, but also more expensive. People who have high power usually go for a higher refractive index lens, so that it's thin. But if you have low power, then a lower refractive index is probably fine. And do remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and do check out my website, manochaacademy.com.